I'm Melissa Chartrand, and I'm over at the Geyer Barn, 250 South Street, Hyannis, right on the High Arts campus, and I'm sitting with Donna Davis, a printmaker. Nice to be here, yeah, and we have you. some of... Thank you for having me. No, thank you, and thank you for letting us come, because you've been over at the barn using this as a workspace and exhibit space, which is what we're so excited to have happening mm -hmm. here at the barn. You've been working with a few other artists. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I first want to talk about you and then the printmaking process. Okay. Prior to this, I, was, uh, I worked more with my arts online, um, so I just really felt it was time to be a part of the community, get involved locally. Um, there's such a great online community, but it's not the same as having that ability to, you know, interact with other artists sure. and other people. And I, I lucked into this space, and I've really enjoyed being here. So great. And let's talk a little bit about that because we, you have been in this space, being able to come and go and work with a few other artists. And we and we chatted briefly about that before off camera about that community and camaraderie mm -hmm. and sharing. Yeah. I well, a, a friend of mine had found the space and invited me to come in while she went to Paris for a month. Um, and so it was just sort of a fluke. It was one of those moments in life where you think, well, this is the right time to make this move. Um, and since then, I've met you know, the other artists who work here, other people just coming in and out in the community. And it's really been such a great connection. Sure. So it really makes me want to move forward. I think it will probably also affect my art as well, because I feel like it's really a representation of um, your environment, so now to be more part of Barnstable and Hyannis area, I think that's going to be great both for friends and for my artwork as well. And for your work. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting. So let's talk a little bit about the, the printmaking and mm -hmm. the process. It's so un, unusual to me to see how it's done. Yeah, it's, it's quite a process. It's very much about the process for me. Um, I love history and I've studied history as well as art. Um, so I usually start most of my work with um, photographs, and I have quite an archival, uh, quite a bit of old photographs from my family and my husband's family. And so it starts with me going through, looking at all the photographs, deciding what just kind of takes my fancy. And then I take that old photograph, and that gets scanned into a computer. Then at that point, it becomes digital. I manipulate and play with the image, the color, the contrast in like a Photoshop program. From that point, it goes into a clear transparency, which is like a negative. And then that, now it comes back out of the digital, back into the physical world, where I um, burn it onto a screen, which is what you do for silk screen or screen printing. So then it becomes a screen. And then now I'm back to the tactile act of putting the image onto paper or canvas with inks or paints. Um, so it's a whole process. Sure. And then also the, the background that I use to sort of place my images, my, um, which started as photographs and become screens, um, is usually more like a mono printing process where I take, um, it's almost an abstraction of color and form that I um, will use a, a printing press or other processes to make like a mono print. And then from that mono print, I take the original image, which I've turned into a screen, and then that sort of gets tagged or placed on top of the, that background. And so the layers, I think, kind of have a, a look back to antiquity, but kind of has a, almost a modernity in the fact that it's like a graffiti kind of tagging on my monoprint. Sure. So, very involved. Yes. And do, you have, <laughs> do you enjoy each one of those processes? And I ma imagine each step along the way can really take a turn. Yeah, it's almost, I almost do them on separate days as well because I, there, I guess I have so many varied interests that that's why the, my final art piece has to have so many layers to it. When I'm working on the monoprints, the single prints that I tag with my images, that would be just one day where I'm just really about color and form. I'm not thinking about. Um, representation or the vignette of the story. I'm just thinking about the color and the form. And then I'll print maybe 20 or 30 pages or whatever I'm printing on. And then I'll kind of live with those for that day. And then those kind of speak to me and maybe they'll become a landscape or just a pattern. And then that's what I use to then print on top of. So then, and then a day where I'm spending just looking at photographs, that's just to get a cup of tea and sit down and spread the old photographs around you and just look through the past so that has a lot of like tangible qualities for me that I really enjoy about the past so yeah each each of the processes is very involved but I think in the end it kind of gives me a 
a piece of work that I feel connected to, so hopefully the viewer feels that way. I think so. We've talked about that as well. Let's let's talk about one one such of those okay. pieces. The the three ladies. So that started out as a photograph. Um, it was actually a photograph uh, from my husband's family. I think it was probably from about maybe 1900. Uh, at that time, the little portable brownie cameras were really popular, so we have a lot of beach photography from people, family members being at summer houses on the Cape or that area. Um, so that started out as that image. Um, then the, uh, the third layer on top of that, which is um, almost like a wallpaper print, actually was a sample of an antique wallpaper. I think it may have been like a William Morris style wallpaper. So that actually became another screen. So it sort of became a combination of looking at the past looking at an interior as wallpaper, um, but placing that on the characters, which are three women in antique bathing suits on the beach. <laughs> um, but yet they're sort of looking into this distance, which in the photograph they're looking out to see at sailing ships. But in this piece, they're just sort of looking off into sort of a pattern or it could be, I sort of like the idea that the background is left in, for the viewer to interpret what it is they're looking for. Um, so. Yeah, that piece has those that many layers, and <laughs> that's sort of how I kind of came to it. It must be interesting when you've had people come and look at your work, mm -hmm. how they gravitate towards certain pieces, as yeah. you say, that photo connection of it that reminds them of something. And sometimes I'll be surprised, this particular piece we're talking about, the background um, almost has a fiery quality. And again, I do my backgrounds on a separate day from, I, I'm not thinking about if it's going to be the background for a particular piece. Um, I'm just playing with color and form. And then I'll try out my images from the silk screen onto the various onto backgrounds to see what I like or how it works best. And this one just really spoke to me. And I'm surprised because I guess I just find it surprising that um, just the general viewer who's come in off the street really are drawn to that. Because I almost thought maybe it was too, not racy, but the fact that it was sort of people looking into flames, I thought maybe it would be a bit scary. Okay. But I don't think people view it that way. I think they just see it as sort of like, Maybe a hot summer day, or right? But how they knows, interpret but, yeah. it, they might not even see it that so, way. That's yeah, what I love surprising. so much about art. Um, now, well, tell me a little bit about your background, mm -hmm. and have you always done printmaking, or and I know you do other types of work as well. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned. Well, I actually um, I studied originally. I studied art history, um, and then I did um, a degree in painting. So I was mainly um, a more of a realist painter, mostly focusing on the figure, which has always been my interest probably because of history. Um, and then uh, about two years ago, I decided to do printmaking because um, the meticulous work of doing almost realist figural painting is very involved. Like one painting can take you, you know, you spend two, three months with one painting. So you're kind of living with that image for a while. So when I took a few printmaking courses, just to kind of put my toe in the water to see how <laughs> I would feel, I just fell in love with it right away because the fact that there are so many processes, you can take printmaking in so many directions. I like the instantaneousness of it, but yet I also like that it worked well with sort of a cerebral or like a narrative. Um, so once I took that, I then studied um, printmaking. I studied at uh, the museum school in Boston, and I also took a few classes here at the Four Seas. They had some really good instructors there, um, just to kind of hone what it is that I wanted to do. And then I kind of took sort of, again, that narrative that I had when I was a more of a realist painter, which is the figure in a vignette or a situation, and just, you know, move that into printmaking. And I think the, I feel like the, the story I want to tell goes very well with printmaking just because of the processes involved. Sure. It's fascinating to me and how you can take elements from what you did study into this. And where do you see your work heading? Well, as, I said, a tough <laughs> exactly. well, as I said, now that I'm becoming more involved in the Cape locally, I feel like I just want to get out now and start getting images of local um, houses and destinations and places because I feel I want uh, some of the characters of the people who live in my paintings to sort of populate the local space. So I kind of see myself moving in that direction. I'm also starting to work on... Um, after I do the process of sort of tagging my prints with my screen printed image, I think I'm going to go back in and start painting a little bit, you know, oh, bringing my painting back in. Because right now it's most of my work, because I'm printmaking, there's no brush work because it's all just, my hand doesn't touch it that way, it's just printed. 
but I originally was trained as a painter, so I'm kind of thinking of bringing a little bit of that painterliness back into it. Sure, I love that little mashup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, another layer because I like adding That's another right, layer. That's right, you like those layers. layers. Exactly. Oh. Thank you for <laughs> thank being you. here, and thank you for being at the barn, and we hope our viewers will come and meet and chat with Donna again. So interesting to talk with you and about the process, and you can see her here at the barn several days a week, actually, and with the paint. We had to clear a little bit away to have this interview, but it's all right here, and I know that um, I find it so fascinating. I know that our patrons to the barn will enjoy meeting Great. with well, you. Thank you. So, so again, <laughs> thank you so much, Donna. You can find more information about her on her website. And for Donna, I'm Melissa Chartrand wishing you an artful day.